Just a reminder that despite the stay-at-home uh, measures that are presently in, in force, uh, the church is still open for prayer and we will have communion services a Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So um, the Cardinal was able to obtain for us the permission to keep our churches open, to keep functioning, even though it's just communion services. And the argument, of course, is that it's an essential need. So. Um, our, our faith nourishes us spiritually, psychologically, and even physically because a healthy mind, a healthy soul enables us to have healthy bodies. So it's good news and it's wonderful that uh, we are able to keep our churches open for prayer. So nothing changes. The schedule is the same. In regards to today's gospel reading, it's a beautiful passage about this paralyzed man that is carried by four uh, four individuals, they carry him up on the roof and let him down uh, through the roof right in front of our Lord. And try to imagine the scene. So our Lord, um, you know, he's, he's at his home or, or at somebody's home, and there's such a large crowd gathered around him, and everybody's just pressing to get as close as they possibly can. So these four individuals, who are they? Well, they're probably just individuals who are very zealous it doesn't mention that they were relatives of the man who was paralyzed or anything like that. They probably knew of the man, but they're, they're, they were probably thinking, well, here's Jesus. He's doing all kinds of miracles. Why doesn't he do a miracle on this paralyzed man? All we need to do is get him to Jesus. Now, they probably initially tried, you know, to work they through, their way through the crowd, asking people to make room. But people were so intent on getting close to Jesus, hearing every word that he was saying, seeing everything that he was doing, people wouldn't budge. So they were, these four men were very determined, so they decided to go around the back of the house. And imagine the effort it must have taken to drag this man up onto the top of the roof. So they probably had to use ropes or, or, or make do with something. Who knows how they pulled this man up onto the house. And, and, you know, even to open the, the uh, roof of the house, it, it would have required quite an effort. So they let the man down. Now, it was probably just some tiles. It's hard to know what the roof consisted of. But they let the man down right in front of our Lord. So such tremendous determination, such tremendous zeal. And what's really noteworthy in today's Gospel reading very often when our Lord heals someone, he says, let it be done according to your faith. But in, in today's gospel reading, it's different. Notice what it says. When Jesus saw their faith, plural, it's in the plural, not the man's faith, not the paralytic's faith. When he saw their faith, the faith of the four men. When he saw their faith, he said to the man who was paralyzed, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, why does our Lord first forgive the sin of the man and only after uh, heal him of his paralysis? Is it just because he wants to make a point that he has the authority? Well, no. It's because there is a connection between sin and our burdens in life, including our physical burdens. So sin is the causes these things. So ultimately the sin of Adam and Eve. So I as an individual, let's say I was totally perfect and never sinned. Okay, let's just say maybe venial sins. But let's say I had a terrible illness. Well, it's not necessarily because of my own personal sins. However, when I do sin, I am much more likely to suffer negative consequences that could affect me even physically. There was a great priest in, in the late uh, 1500s, early 1600s, and he was initially a doctor, but he would only treat his patients if they first went to confession. And because he was a good Christian, he freely treated um, the poor. So they were not able to pay him, but he would treat them, but he would insist that before he treats them, they go to confession. And he had tremendous success in treating these individuals because they were spiritually healthy, spiritually whole, and that enabled them to also receive greater physical healing. So our Lord makes this point, that this connection between being spiritually well and being physically well. 
the spiritual is much more important and must precede the physical wellness and can contribute to physical wellness. As I mentioned, there are, of course, some exceptions. So I wanted to kind of get back to, to the zeal, the tremendous zeal and determination of these four men who pull this man up on the roof and, and let him down in front of our Lord. And, you know, it's, it's just amazing to consider the extent that they went to for this man. And it's a reminder to us, what extent are we willing to go to bring someone to Christ? In other words, imagine if we knew that somebody could be healed. Let's say they had the coronavirus and they were close to death's door. They, they're dying. They're, they're in terrible condition. They're having a hard time breathing. If we could bring that person to Christ, would we not do it? Well, of course we would or someone who's paralyzed or, or, or has cancer or whatever. Should, should we not bring these individuals or would we not bring them to Christ if we knew that Christ would heal them or possibly heal them? Well, of course we would. And the reason is because we see their sufferings, we understand their sufferings. But when it comes to spiritual sufferings, the loneliness that some people are experiencing, or the negative effects of their sins on their lives, their, their guilt, or, or just the darkness of their lives because they're so far from God. We often don't see that. And some people, they appear to be very happy, very joyful, but they're actually very depressed. In fact, I was in a parish where there was a young man. He seemed very outgoing, very happy, but he committed suicide. Very, very unfortunate. Had we known, we probably would have reached out to him and, you know, tried to address his issues, but we didn't know. But my whole point is there are people away from God, far away from God, in the darkness of, of their sins, in the darkness of ignorance, in the darkness of atheism. And should we not bring these people to Christ? And of course, the question we ought to ask is, well, how can we bring them to Christ? But do we have the kind of zeal that these four men had, first of all? And if we do, then there are many different ways in which we can bring these individuals to Christ. We need to pray for them. Recall what Our Lady of Fatima said, many go to hell simply because there's no one to pray for them. We need to pray for them. We need to be a good example to them. We need to befriend them. And we need to speak to them about the things of Christ. But you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to witness to my faith. Make the effort. Practice. Witness to the fact that having God in your life is such a benefit to you. But you know, right now we have a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. We are running the Alpha program in our parish. And the Alpha program is really intended for people who are perhaps lonely or away from the faith, who need maybe some socializing, and, and an introduction to Christianity, an introdu introduction, introduction to Christ and, and to, the, to a life of prayer. It's a wonderful opportunity and many people have converted and embraced Christianity because they've gone through the Alpha program. I remember um, a couple of years ago after I ran it in my former parish, um, there was someone, I believe it was in Whitby, but it may have been some other place, but it was in Ontario anyways. And they ran an Alpha uh, program in their parish, a, a Catholic church. And there was a man who had regularly come to Mass with his wife, but he was not a Catholic. In fact, he was not a Christian. And, you know, uh, I, I guess probably the, the priest had invited him to join RCIA, but he never did. But he, he agreed to kind of try out the Alpha program. And he went through the Alpha program and he became a believer, and he went through RCIA and eventually became a Catholic and now is involved in running the Alpha program in his parish. So this is just one wonderful example of the power and the efficacy of the Alpha program. Now, the Alpha program is a wonderful program. It's very, it's very well designed, very appealing. It appeals to, to younger generations also. And it's not just the messages in the videos that, that are, are uh, portrayed. It's partially the discussion aspect of it also, the socializing aspect. But the really important aspect of Alpha is the prayers that we are offering up for the participants of the Alpha program. And so I, I, I encourage you, in fact, I am, I am pleading with you, please 
pray for the individuals who will be going through our Alpha program. Even if they're already Catholic or already Christian, I'm sure they will become a better person because of their experience through Alpha. And there may be individuals going through it who perhaps are questioning, you know, does God exist? And maybe there are individuals who simply don't believe in God. But this is our opportunity to bring them to Christ in the same way that these four men brought the paralytic to Christ. So if you know someone, invite them to Alpha and pray for them and pray for all the participants of Alpha. And I want to thank you in advance for doing that.